on tonight because this one was heavy on my soul i'm tired of the fake alpha males online boosting up these brokies heads and making them all think that they high value sir nothing about you is high value your bank account's not high value your morals and standards ain't high value even your car ain't high value it's underwater and depreciated but for some reason they got y'all hyped up making you think that you're in the top one percent just because you got promoted to the team lead at the amazon warehouse it's 2021. Most of us women nowadays, we making more money than a lot of y'all dudes. We the niggas with the money. So for you to be thinking that you have value out here and that your poor character morals, you can make up with it with your bank account. Some women can be bought, but guess what, baby? Not all of us can be bought. Hello, 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 guys. It is Lexis Exodus, leader of the Black Woman Exodus. How are you guys doing? Like always, if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe, please share. And also, if you have any suggestions or any tips for videos or content that you'd like to see, please feel free to email me at LexisExodusChannel at gmail.com. So this is going to be my daily installment of Blackest Man Zoo, where we meet Monday through Friday at 6.30 ET. And we discuss the animals, creatures, and other atrocities often found in Blackistan. <laughs> Um, and like I stated yesterday, I plan to do this series throughout the month of April. Then at the end of the month, I kind of want to level set, review the engagement, um, and then make sure that the response aligns with the level of effort of these. This takes a lot of work. So um, I want to make sure that um, you guys are really enjoying these videos. So if you do, um, I expect a like. <laughs> I expect a like. Um, I, my video isn't monetized. I don't post my cash app. So I expect for you to like uh, the content. I also expect for you to chime in in the comment section, in the chat, even if it's just to say hey, um, or if it's just to say that you're enjoying the content, that would be very, very greatly appreciated. <laughs> so let's get into today's episode. So today we are going to profile the abuse of death might. Oh boy, y'all. I'm, I'm going to take a sip of my coffee on that one. So um, their habitat. So first off, we're going to go into, you know, uh, recent news stories where we've seen these creatures, these animals um, in their natural habitat. But before we do that, I want to briefly go through the profile of your abuse of death mite. So these fools are found everywhere in Blackistan and Nicaragua. They are not isolated to certain areas because species exist globally within the Black community. So this is regardless of nationality, regardless of where they come from, regardless of their, um, I don't know, their their religious background, their upbringing. Uh, these, these animals exist all throughout Blackistan. So these uh, creatures' appearances, they're oftentimes very small. In stature, so so very short, very petite, very scrawny. Um, these are your little little skinny men. Um, so bird chest, no muscles, skinny and very very ugly. Um, and their behavior. So oftentimes because they're so small, they'll have Napoleon complexes. Um, they're they're very cowardly because all their lives they've been picked on by other men. Um, but when it comes to to women, they like to put their hands on women and children who are weaker than them. So they're very volatile. They're very abusive, very boisterous. And this is because they're overcompensating um, due to their lack of uh, being able to defend themselves and their their lack of power within the male species than with other male groups. Um, and although most are broke, 
Some dust mites are also identified as high value snakes as well. So we talked about the high value snake. High value snake, uh, they exist because, you know, within Blackistan, most of these makers are broke. They only make 40,000 a year if they're lucky. Um, so those few that make above that amount of money are considered high value, uh, but they are low value in character. So their character is defunct. They have no integrity, they have no morals. So, and remember, even high value men, usually within Blackistan, they often have one major character flaw. So that's, uh, they could be physically abusive, sexually abusive, rapists, uh, sometimes even things as extreme as um, they can be serial killers, they can be pedophiles, uh, they can be substance abusers, so abuse drugs and alcohol. So a lot of these creatures, a lot of abusive dust mites also can be characterized as a high value snake as well. <clears throat> and some notable dust mites in the media, Chris Brown, who assaulted Rihanna back in the day, who beat her ass, uh, brutally, brutally attacked her uh, while they were dating. Also Bow Wow, who's physically and, and verbally assaulted his ex, also, Gervonta, the boxer who violently snatched up his ex by the neck on camera in front of a crowd of people. And then, of course, Tory Lanez, the little naker who shot Meg the Stallion um, in the foot. So all, all of those fools are notable dust mites, very, very small. Uh, I, I like to call them scrappy do because very small in stature, so they overcompensate, um, but not with other men. That bravado, they reserve that energy for only people who are weaker than them, so women and children. So let's get into what we came here for. <laughs> and let's look into um, some instances where these creatures are um, in their natural habitat so we can uh, really illustrate what, what these animals look like. So Quavo and Sweetie. So we've been inundated with news media uh, and stories and posts about this couple, how they've recently broken up. Um, and Sweetie announced her breakup from rapper Quavo. Um, he belongs to the group Migos. Uh, with a series of cryptic tweets. So let's see if I can pull up some of those tweets. Yeah, so I believe this was last week. She said, I'm single. I've endured too much betrayal and hurt behind the scenes for a false narrative to be circulating that degrades my character. Present still man eight scars and the love isn't real when the intimacy is given to other women. Uh, then she tweeted another tweet and said, I emotionally checked out a long time ago and have walked away with a deep sense of peace and freedom. And I'm excited for this new chapter of Elevation. So I said, uh-oh. <laughs> and it's interesting because I, I said this, I looked at this and immediately thought, okay, this is just a nigger being an acre. Um, he probably cheated. He's probably fucking another woman. He's probably, you know, out partying and drinking. He's probably been um, photoed or caught red-handed doing something that um, he wasn't supposed to be doing. Little did I know that he's actually beating her ass behind the scenes because an elevator clip has recently gone viral of him and her and physically assaulting her in an elevator. So let's watch that. So they're fighting over something and he's pushing her, throwing her around. She fell to the ground. Poor thing. She looks like she might be hurt. She's like cowering in the corner. <sighs> Poor baby. Y'all, this is triggering for me because I went through the same exact thing. Oh, and then he, dummy, realizes that there's a camera right there and there's somebody sitting outside the elevator like, why the fuck is this woman sitting on the ground like she's been injured? Oh, now he wants to be a nice guy. So I'm guessing he's going to try to help her out. Oh, no, the dust mite doesn't care. He just lets the elevator close <laughs> and looks at her. Oh, my gosh. This don't make no fucking sense. So he's holding the elevator door open for her now. She looks hurt. 
She's trying to pull herself up. She looks like she's in pain. Poor baby. Oh, gosh, y'all, this is really difficult for me to watch. Okay, <clears throat> so let's make sure we pause that because I don't want the audio playing in the background. There you go. So, yeah, so in that video we just saw rapper Quavo throwing his girlfriend around like a rag doll in an elevator. And like I said, this this uh, dust mite can also be considered and classified as a high value snake. Um, so he has money. So he's supposed to be one of those super eligible bachelors that are at the top of the totem pole in Blackistan. She's supposed to be ecstatic and just happy and is supposed to be thanking her lucky stars that she's with him, although she's getting her ass beat. And make no mistake about it, I often think about these clips that are caught on camera. If these men are comfortable doing this type of shit in public, while people are watching while there are cameras around, just imagine what they're doing in private and what's going on behind those doors. Yeah, and so this this is crazy. It's um, so I think about how uh, these men these men are pedestalized because within the community, statistically, these group groups of men are more likely to be unemployed or in prison, and if they happen to be free and are employed, that's a rarity. Um, and even then, uh, if they make more than forty thousand dollars, man. You done, you done found a pot of gold, they act like, at the end of the rainbow. And, and, and that's it. That's where the standards stop. Uh, nothing else is expected of these men. Like I always say, the bar is in hell. So, you know, these fools can cheat and have an entire secret family on the other side of town. Who cares? Who cares? Um, he might abuse alcohol and drugs. He might be uh, a pill head. He might drink lean all day and can barely stay up and be attentive to, with his children. But who cares? Who cares? He's he's high value. Um, you beat women. Oh, no, that, that happens. That stuff happens. That's normal. Couples get into it sometimes. Who cares? Uh, the bottom line is as long as you're not in jail and you make some money, not even a lot of money, you are considered a good man in Pakistan. And these are the types of environments that breed really, really abusive dust mites like this. So let's look at some other abusive dust mites. Um, so this is boxer Gervonta, who was videoed publicly choking up, snatching up his girlfriend in a crowd full of people. Um, and with no repercussions, no one tr tries to intervene. No one comes to this girl's aid. They just sit and watch. Um, and Gervonta is your classic case of a abusive decimate because he's little in stature um, and he beats women. see that so this man snatched her up by her collar pushing around manhandling her in a crowd full of people and no one intervenes they just looking and videotaping and this this type of stuff is so triggering to me because i had so many people who were just bystanders possibly bystanders while i was getting assaulted and while i was abused i remember um, running outside of my apartment while my ex was chasing me barefoot and the neighbor was outside and screaming for help, like, help, help, call the police, call the police. And I remember this man just standing there laughing. I cussed him out. I cussed him the hell out. He was just standing there laughing. Oh, gosh. Black women are just the least protected, the least cared for, especially in Blackistan. Um, then we have Ray Rice. Remember this happened a few years ago where he punched out his wife in an elevator? This is another abuse of death might. Lord Jesus, out cold. And this this is a man, like a he's a football player. So, you know, he packs a lot of punch um, and he just knocks her out cold. And remember, he ended up, he ended up knocking her out and had to drag her because she was unconscious, drag her out the elevator. So yeah, that's, this is just another instance of telltale case of your abusive death mite. Yeah, here they go clearly angry at each other. They get on the elevator. 
And that's the other thing. Women makers realize that they're, every everything is um, surveillance nowadays, everything. And if it's not caught on a surveillance camera, it's caught on people will catch it on your their phones. Everybody has phones. Look at them cold, knocked her out cold and then just stands there like a sociopath. Um, then we also have Bow Wow, Notable, Desmite, Abusive Desmite, um, 411, probably 150 pounds soaking wet. Cornering his girlfriend, verbally assaulting her, physically assaulting And they get in the elevator and head up to their place. And you can see he's in a rage, trying to grab her phone. Right. I mean, he may have been inside. And, and then again. Yeah. So never- grabbing her and stuff, that's not cool. But that's what these abusive death mites like to do. Um, they are timid. They are cowardly when it comes to other men because they're so small. They're so little. Um, they can't defend themselves. They're defenseless when it comes to defending themselves from other men, and from alpha male, males for sure. However, um, if they're upset with women, they will argue, they will bark, they will save all that energy for defenseless, weak women. Um, and I'll never forget Meg the Stallion. So here's a video of after she got shot and, um, and assaulted by, I guess, my Tory Lanez. This is a video of the aftermath of her limping um, because they are being apprehended by the police. Poor Aang, got a bloody foot. Okay. This is a damn shame. So, like I said, um, this this is what this is what uh, you get in Blackistan. So all of these are textbook cases of abusive dust mites. Um, Quavo is one of them. So um, I looked him up because I don't really know much about about I don't care about these rappers. Uh, so I looked him up, though, and it turns out he has had multiple run ins with the law. Um, he's been arrested and convicted of carrying firearms and for having narcotics. Uh, so he also does drugs. So remember, I said a lot of times often these guys are drug abusers. He's ugly. He's hideous. Um, he's little, he's scrawny, skinny, um, and so he has a Napoleon complex. Um, he, li- he likes to beat women's ass and likes to attack and bully people who cannot defend themselves. Um, and I'm, I'm just not surprised. I'm not surprised. Um, I mean, we think about all of these other instances where this uh, has happened. I did a video on Ray Shrimmerd and how they've been um, assaulted and been, or not assaulted, I'm sorry, they've been exposed for assaulting women that they're with. One even had a broken tooth while pregnant and a slew of other little guy knickers that fall in this category. So this is what you'll get black women and I don't give a fuck how much money that these fools make. You're getting the same men in different bodies. And I like to listen to Divested Zealot. Um, she is awesome. You guys put me onto her and I've been binging her content. I wish she would re- record more and release more content, but she's wonderful. But one thing that she said that really resonated with me is like within this community, you are picking from a batch of rotten apples when dating. So it's like, do you want the one with the worms or the one with a little bit of mold? Do you want the one who will beat you and kill you or you want the one who's a pedophile and likes little girls? You see what I mean? Um, Do you want the one who's broke and uh, will abandon his children and and leave you a single mom? Or do you want the one who has side babies and who will give you STDs because he can't keep his dick in his pants? So um, I wanted to talk through Blackistan's response because, of course, this is going viral and is on all the blogs and all the news media outlets. So um, in typical fashion, the community turns everything into a joke. So you'll see lots of memes. Um, Domestic violence is funny because we, we like to laugh at things as opposed to taking them seriously and holding these men accountable. But then also, of course, there was a lot of victim blaming and a lot of excuses. So let's watch this clip from uh, this guy named Trouble. Apparently, he is a prominent, well-known person where he talks about uh, this video and normalizes it. So let's watch this and see his response to Sweetie being assaulted. I can't hear. I see a (laughs) spam. We ain't gonna act like we don't know what this shit about, man. Y'all ho wanna be some icy girl. And y'all ho ass nigga wanna be some icy girl too, man. Get in with Sweetie. That shit was some basic ass shit where they just went with uh, her ex or 
uh, they uh, pre, pre present boyfriend, whatever the fuck they got going on. That's they business. But at the end of the day, that shit went no extra ass shit. They like when you was a jit, you playing tug of war. And I mean, well, we end up getting the best of the bed. We end up taking a little tumble. You know what I'm saying? It was a tumble. It was a goddamn tug yeah. of war in the Call of Duty cave. I mean, she just loaded the game, just fell back a little bit, and abused her. But y'all know that. I mean, I wouldn't agree with that. You know what I'm saying? If that were the case. Now, Justin, that was abuse. They said it was all the way up under the napkins, a box of napkins and shit, man. But, Can y'all understand this, idiot? So I don't know if y'all heard that. Um, he's d really, really difficult to understand. Um, but the gist of it is he's saying that it was just a tug of war. He was saying that it wasn't physical abuse because they were just fighting over a bag. And my thing is, for real, y'all, like there should never be a situation where a man physically puts his hands on another woman, period. And I don't care if it's to try to get something, to try to grab something from her, to try to restrain her, manhandling her. Anytime you're in a heated argument or there's a point of contention between you and your partner, it is never acceptable for a male to put his hands on another, on a woman, period. His hands should always be on his person. <sighs> So let's see, there were quite a bit more Dusties here that uh, chimed in with their silly ass opinion. Let's see if I can pull them up real quick. Okay, so here we have Adrian Broner saying, I ain't seen nothing wrong in that video. If you ask me, that's black love. If me and my significant other don't argue like that, then I don't want her, then, D-E-N, not, not T-H-E-N. Um, then I don't want her because I'd rather have somebody who might punch me while I'm asleep before I take a beautiful woman who go sneak off and fuck another nigga while I'm asleep. It's a black tough love for me. Okay, so a few things to unpack, you know, maybe. So let's take a mo moment of silence so we can digest this bullshit. So this is a struggle boxer, Adrian Broner, who is pretty much saying in so many words that this is black love. So, so see, these, these abusive dust mites, they equate. This is the baseline for them. This is standard for them. And this is what you'll experience within this community, um, that typically it's going to be toxic. It's expected to be physically assaulted. He talks about he'd rather get punched in the face than his girl to cheat. How about we don't do neither? But this is what I mean. He's talking about that's black tough love. That's AKA struggle love. That's that's what's normal. That's what what's normalized. And this is the type of treatment that you'll get with these men. Um, here comes another struggle celebrity. I have no idea who this person is. His name is Izzy, and he chimed in, and he said, "If you think that abuse, D A T S." as opposed to T-H-A-T-S. So I don't know what's happening if these niggers, if it's an epidemic and motherfuckers um, need hooked on phonics and uh, all, all of them dropped out or what, but apparently spelling is not their their biggest strength because they don't know how, they don't know basic grammatical in, um, in spelling. They don't know how to, how to master those concepts. Um, if you think that's abuse, you must not never seen abuse before. See, again, normalizing this, minimalizing this, you know, and I, like I said, I feel so triggered because I remember being choked by my ex and him telling everyone he squeezed me tight. Um, let's look at some more struggle post. Um, this one's from a mammy. Y'all acting like he body slammed her. LOL. He ain't even hit her. Ain't look like he wanted to either. And this is why, Black woman, you can't save everybody. Um, some people you're just going to have to let go because as a woman, she's justifying this bullshit. Wait till she experiences that because the statistics show one in four women are physically assaulted and um, end up in a domestic violence situation. Wait until it's her turn. Then next thing you know, she's going to have a Black eye and a missing tooth and going to be crying, crying foul after she done justified this man physically putting his hands on this woman. Uh, what else we got here? He didn't hit her. They both pushing against each other, trying to get whatever is in that bag. What part don't you guys understand that it is never acceptable for a man to put his hands on a woman? 
there should never be um, an aggressive situation or a point of contention or during an argument or a disagreement where a man's hands leave his person ever. But this is what y'all like to do. Let's not assume who's right, who's wrong from a short clip. Again, y'all, this is a live, live and breathing video. They say a photo speak a thousand words. How, how much do you need? What does a video clip speak if a photo speaks a thousand words? It's like you got to be on life support, hanging on for dear life for these people to be convinced that you were physically assaulted and harmed by these men. Just caving. That's a woman, too. This other girl, he did not touch her at all. So don't even do it. They were tussling over the bag. Again, this is redundant. Men don't put their hands on women. What could have possibly been within that bag? Was it a million dollars? Was it a buttload of diamonds? I doubt it. He was just upset. And he was just being petty, trying to take an item probably that he gifted to her back from her. Just like he took that Bentley that he bought her. Last one, Shorty said, you're going to take my Bentley back. Say less, decided to cook Quavo. Quavo, Brody gonna need Chris Brown or OJ Simpson publicist. This too shall pass. So you sitting here comparing this man to Chris Brown, who we know who has verbally admitted out of his own mouth that he hurt Rihanna and OJ Simpson, who we know um, killed his ex-wife. You're comparing Quavo to them. And that's right there just admitting that you know this is toxic behavior. This is physically abusive behavior. But in that same breath, you're gonna say, looks like Saweetie was gonna beat up somebody. And, and Quavo was just holding her back from a fight. This don't make no damn no sense. So there's a slew of other uh, comments and this is going viral. I'm sure there's going to be more that goes out that's released within the next few days. Um, what I will say is this is very tough for me to cover because I'm triggered because I, I went through the same experience. Um, and I, I, I used to be embarrassed about my experience, but now I'm very vocal because I understand um, secretive, b being secretive and being ashamed is what allows this cycle to continue. We have to verbalize our experiences. We have to verbalize um, and be open about being assaulted. That way these men are held accountable. And then also, so other women are warned and know what to look out for. So, you know, my ex, when I was with him, he put me out the car when I was pregnant. He also held his fists up to my face and threatened to punch me when I was pregnant. He also broke my tooth while I was carrying his child. Um, after my baby was born, I was holding him in my arms and he snatched me up. And um, the only thing that calmed him down was me saying, can I please put down the baby if you if you going to beat me up? If you're going to throw me around, please just let me put the baby up. That's the only thing that stopped him. He's choked me several times. Um, his brother has two. And that, that was the last straw when his brother put his hands on me. Um, and still to this day, family and friends will call me a liar. Even though I have multiple texts, I had uh, photographic evidence of my teeth, of holes in the wall, of things he damaged. Even though I had a uh, police report, even though the judge granted me a protection order to get away from him, even though he has a documented history of anger issues, um, he was later diagnosed with bipolarism and schizophrenia. These dysfunctional, toxic ass, delusional, fucked up weirdo weirdos will still turn around till this day and call me a liar. And they'll call this man a good man because he'll post a, a photo on Facebook of him and my son every few months, every Christmas. So I'll wrap this up by saying beware. Um, black women, there are, are, you know, detractors would like to say not all, not all, not all. And of course, common sense, we all know not all of anything is something. We know that there's never going to be a situation where every single member of a, of a group falls in the same category. We know that. However, what we also know is that we need to be mindful of and pay attention to statistics. We need to be mindful and conscious of themes and of recurrent issues that we see over and over again. The majority of these men are like this. And you can try to keep holding out 
until you find your four leaf clover if you want to, that's on you. Uh, but I encourage you to think through what that looks like for you. So are you just going to keep hitting your head and try over and over and over again until, you know, you look up and you 50 something and then went through 20 men being traumatized over and over and over again and, and, and fucked up? Um, and then at that point, you finally come across this dream, one of a kind man. At that point, you're going to be so broken and so traumatized and so bitter. You'll probably have a few children and will probably have a lot of life experience that is going to harden you and that's going to change you into a person that's not fit for a relationship. So I would encourage you guys to divest as soon as possible. It did not take me long. And when I when I did so um, at the age of 26 is when I guess, quote unquote, divested. But I wasn't even fully divested. I just knew common sense. I just knew hmm, it probably makes more sense just just to treat. Just a, a date who treats me well. It probably makes more sense to look for character over color. And I had gotten to that point and came to that conclusion in my mid 20s. <laughs> I was done and I was just like, I don't give a fuck what this man look like as long as he treats me well. Did that, never looked back. Going strong, happily married, happily married, live in a gated community in the suburbs, beautiful home well taken care of, increased my credit score 200 points, put a large down payment, $10,000 down payment on, on my car, paid off my student loan, $65,000, y'all. A good man. So I will say this is just another cautionary tale to divest, divest, divest. Uh, no longer invest in things that do not serve you. That's all I got. Until next time, see you guys.